All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here, of course, for Maiden Abyss, episode eight. We're uh, we're getting into some sick training this. here. Yeah, uh, made to be put into the wilderness and survive mm-hmm. for ten days. Right. Uh, with no special laser arm. Yeah. And no going out of this area. Right. So, so it's kind of like an escort mission, but you can't move much. Right. And the point that they are considerably making, I would say, kind of interestingly, is the idea that Rico needs to be protected by... Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Which doesn't sound very uh, Sith training. Well, the thing that I, I'm surprised by is the idea that they're not looking out for each other. Right. It's the idea that there's there's both aspects of them both needing to survive in this thing because they can't do this alone. Mm-hmm. But there was extra emphasis put on the uh, right. fact that Reg wasn't able to basically stop uh, Ozen from you know really hurting him in the previous right. episode. So he needs to be stronger. Yeah. Specifically to protect others since he can't seem to be hurt himself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I really wonder if the reason why they gave that as the focus is because what it's actually going to end up being is inverted, is that Rico's going to be the one that needs to protect Reg. Yeah, they they don't really, they haven't set up a way for her to be able to, like, contribute in that sense so far. Her mom was a a white whistle, but um, so far she doesn't have anything to defend herself with. Yeah, it's mostly the aspect that she is the driving force of the story right? with regards to them going down to the netherworld of the Abyss. Yeah. Um, but it'll be interesting to see which which aspect of like her character gets brought out in particular as we move into the final uh, bits yeah. of this, uh, this season. Right, because we are now getting into that second half. I'd say that final third, in a way. Uh, yeah, that's right, because this is episode eight. <laughs> yeah. All right. right, so without further ado, let's get into this episode and uh, see what happens. <laughs> yep, that's true. That is a great point. Wow. Should definitely drink that. Yeah, I don't know about that. Oh, those are bugs on the water. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Maybe no. something else is in the clean water. Yeah. Back up, back up. Oh yeah, oh boy. What the heck? <laughs> so maybe Reg should, uh, you know, scoop the water out with the, the helmet from far away, you know? Water and then shelter, yep. There you go. It's really interesting how... I've heard a lot of people say it's it's water, food, then shelter. I'm like, nah. I would go water, then shelter. You can you, you can, can be hungry. For you can be hungry for a long time. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> she just appears there. Only the strong survive. Yeah. That's their food. Maybe he can tie it up. Yeah. Bait. It looks like poo. Uh, okay. It's waifu is literally shit. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's it's uh, perfect. And they're lighting it on fire. Mm, I'm in heat. Girl, where you at? <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, he's inside the tree. Oh! Counterweight. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. No, they're talking about what we too. discussed. 
Yeah, her uh, her previous apprentice. Huh? Oh. Yeah. Oh. She love her? Possibly. Possibly, yeah. Oh crap. That's when she's like, oh wait, what's going on? Wow. Okay, that that actually does quite a lot to redeeming her character. Like just a like yeah. What I'm wondering, though, is who did Lysa save her from? Because she was supposed to be the strongest. Right. I think it was that she saw the stuff she put in her body and arms and stuff. And oh. she thought she was attacked. Oh, when she possibly. actually did that to herself, intentionally. Is the ten days up already? I guess so. Hodgepodge stew. Oh, you've leveled up. Mm. I feel like it's supposed to go over his eye, but he doesn't put it over his eye. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a reticle to look through. Mm-hmm. そうだな。過ぎてみれば、あっという間だったよね。待ち人を殺したくなければ真相には留まるな。なんて古い言い伝えがあってね。どういう意味なんだい?うん。時間の感覚が狂っちまうんだ。ご僧の神父で特に顕
Remember, she said that Liza went crazy. Oh, everlasting gunpowder. It's a gun, too. It is also a gun. Yes. Hey, this is the way that she'll be able to fight. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who else would they tell? Oh. Ah, the stuff that they don't want the populace to know? Yeah. Okay. Weird. Seventh layer? But no one comes back to the sixth layer. この怪物は最初から最後まで出し惜しみをしなかった。オッケー。マレルクちゃん。ああ。じゃあ、元気でね。ああ、sad <笑> やっぱり無理だって帰ってきてくれたらどんなにいいかってマルルクいろんな人がここから戻らない旅に行くのを送ってきましたね僕今日が一番悲しいですいやー<笑> This music is really good <笑>ゴミが早かったね <sighs> Wow. From Rag in particular. Yeah. Wow. <笑>ジルオーダー。会ったことあるだろう。<笑> It's a leader, probably, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The sovereign of annihilation. <laughs> That's cruel. So he's so her apprentice is watching out for right, Rico. Mm -hmm. あの子がどんな道も選べるように。なあ、大勢。再びリコが地の底を目指してあんたの前に立ったら教えてやってほしい。<笑><笑> <何を取り繕っているのかね>? <笑> どれだけの奇跡が君を動かしてきたのかってことと、その先で待つ素晴らしい冒険への挑み方。Interesting. She's using the very words that Reg used to describe. Right. So do they just jump and let the updrafts kind of let them slowly descend, basically? I guess so. Wow. Okay. Oh, that was a good episode. It was. I, I really feel like they, they did a good job of redeeming Ozen, I think, in this one. Yeah. Because they gave us proper context to a lot of things that we got very little true perspective on. Right. We got her to show actual, like, like some personality and humanity, not just you know being the the dark and, and love. Like, yeah, yeah, I feel like yeah. she loved Liza. The idea that mm -hmm. um, you know this this forgettable guy that shows up and dies right. very quickly, probably yep. from that cave raid, uh, mm -hmm. the the foreign cave raiders that they encountered, and then she went on some crazy killing spree and you know, killed a bunch whatever of them it was that and happened, earned her title Liza the Annihilator, or what mm -hmm. have you. Um, She's still in that regard when Liza is tired and weak and stuff. Then 
ended up carrying the child right. up. I yes. think herself. I, I think so. I yeah, think I think that that's was what implied. they were setting up. Yeah. The idea that she chose not to take up the bell and left it there with Liza and went all the way right. up with the kid because yes. I think what they're saying is that Liza was in such a state that she couldn't actually right. I think so. do it. Yeah. Um, so why did she lie about that and saying that well, she helped her mother? Well, um, you well want to make she, did help her, she did help her mother. Yes, I meant like, helping her mother actually carry it up when actually it might have been just... Ozen doing the whole bringing um, up of the artifact with her, the relic with her I don't know. inside it. It, it, could be, it could be that she's trying to keep the image of her mother alive until maybe she sees it for herself or for you sure. know, whatever. Um, it could also be that maybe maybe Ozen was doing like 80% of the work, but, you know, Liza was still helping. Right, it's um, the idea that Liza wasn't capable of doing either the bell or this so sure. Ozen needed to be the one to make the choice and yeah. the choice was what was important right the idea that Ozen could have said no screw your child we're taking the bell right but it was when the child started to make noise mm -hmm. from being a stillborn yep. to being inside the uh, and it's like okay like, she's like okay this um, is yeah all right, all right. Uh, in, in a way she was able to make the choice a little bit uh, a little bit, you know, dispassionately because it because was more it's... of it being more interesting than the bell, potentially. Uh, right. So it, it might have been rationalized, but she did say that she's always taking on burdens. And one of the things I've noticed that they made a point of her character was she's old. Yes. But she constantly seeks out, in a way, little burdens to take upon so that she feels... Right. And, you know, needed and useful and, well, and one of the valued things, uh, and all these other things. One of the things that I saw that was kind of a nice, like, parallel with that yeah. is um, the way they show her constantly hunched over. Yes. You know, like mm -hmm. she's I was going to call that out, too. And, and, and then, you know, intentionally show... Straighten up her back and she yeah. stands up. Um, but, I, and... It's the burden that she carries on her for not only being old, but also uh, living with all this like hardship and experience and stuff that mm -hmm. she's gone through, it's kind of nullified her, her own compassion to where she has to right. manually bring it out for the purpose of actually helping how she sees to be helping yeah. someone like Rico or Reg. Um, right. And it's, and it's yeah. good to see that she is capable of at least making the decision to bring out the compassion, even if it's not right. very like, even if it's uh, uh, more sort of a dying ember of compassion, it's very it's a very flickering flame. Yeah, it's it's not it's not strong, but mm -hmm. but it's still there, and that 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 element of choice and decision is is what is, is good. It, it, yeah, it was what redeemed her character, even though at the end she's all irredeemable. How very yeah, yeah, irredeemable! Exactly. Basically, the idea that she is irredeemable in that respect. Yes, she mm -hmm. cannot fix herself. She's 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 stuck in this state but she can still make yeah. choices within this state mm -hmm. that are redeemable i i think that the point is that her state is not redeemable but huh. she can still make choices that have redeeming qualities to them and i think that's enough to say that she as a character as a person is redeemable even though she has a lot of problems well, but hey i think the point that they're going they're going to make is that the more, the deeper into the abyss, the more hardships and stuff you're going to bring with you wherever you go. So oh, trauma absolutely. and like serious PTSD could be a theme of this show going forward. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think, uh, I don't think Ozen was dealing with PTSD, but oh, no, I think I think there's different forms of PTSD, Jacob. It doesn't have to be the <gasps> trigger, the flashback of you know Vietnam or something like uh -huh. that. It's the it's the bit where. You've endured so much trauma, just like how you we were talking about how the kids being treated in such a way makes them normalize yeah, abuse. No, oh, it, oh, it, normalize. it normalizes abuse in yeah, their yeah. head. Mm -hmm. To Ozen, what it did is it normalizes the uh, the pain, the horror. It's the idea that she is burdening mm -hmm. these children intentionally for their own benefit yeah because so survive right because the whole idea of that burden is normalized for her so why wouldn't she pass it on it'll make them stronger it made me stronger right it's that's, that it's that's that, what she did with liza yeah it's that 
it's that whole gamut of experiences that might have weighed her down with not necessarily like a visceral emotional trauma, but a an apathetic trauma. Yeah. Basically the idea but, that she's worn out and that's that's mm-hmm. the, the tired aspect of her character where she speaks very uh, you know uh. yeah um there was a, a a saying that came to mind that i thought was kind of fitting for ozen where um you know you know the saying it's not the years it's the miles yeah i feel like for ozen it's like that saying but then it's also the years too <laughs> like <laughs> sure <laughs> sure like poor ozen like <laughs> I, I i don't like her oh me but neither. i I, I, I can't help but feel some compassion for her. I think that's the difference, is the idea that Ozen doesn't really have the ability to feel compassion for those that don't deserve it. It's yeah. the idea that we as as human beings, we have our empathy that we bring into stories like this, and we can have some compassion for her, even though she doesn't necessarily fully deserve it. Right. I would, yeah. I would say it's like, I don't, I don't like her, but I like having her on screen. Uh, yeah, but, but I'm I'm also getting a little bit more into it. The idea that I know she's not a real person, or the idea, but I would be able, well, yeah. to, I would be able to forgive someone like that, even though they've, you know, done things that. Sure, if you were able to see inside their head. But that's the idea. That's, that that's the episode. point, though. We are able to do that. Right. If I was Liza, for instance, and she told uh, me yeah, yeah. the full story, sure. And I had all the past experiences. Oh yeah, I would be very. It'd be very yeah. easy for me to forgive her. But even if I was someone who came in as a third party and like was Rico? just told all the information, well, no, because Rico had it done to her. Essentially, I'm talking about being a true third party where she didn't harm me in particular. You know, uh, yeah, I think it's harder okay. for someone like Rico, and that's why I think that the point mm. is they're trying to show that Rico's character has that compassion gotcha. because she I, bears no ill huh. will towards Ozen as she's leaving the second lair. Right. But but part of the reason why. I think being a third party would be important is because uh, Rico has the normalized abuse brainwashing done to her. Well, that too. I would say, though, that a lot of times it's easier to forgive someone for something they did to you than to forgive someone for something they did to someone else. Right, and that's why I think it's important if I was this theoretical third party, mm-hmm. I could still forgive her. Okay. Because I would I would have the full context of who she is and her experience and stuff like that. And I would just have to trust that wherever I got my information from was accurate. Anyway, um, they survived the 10 days. They did. Uh, we, we didn't doubt them at all. Yeah. But, it took uh, about 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. But but I liked that they went through that very quickly. And, they, and that they addressed the idea of time not being the yes, same in all places yes. of the abyss. One of the things that I, I don't know if they're going to get into this at all, but I've been constantly theorizing about the magnetic field thing. Mm-hmm. And this is my thing of where I think the sci-fi aspect will meld with the fantasy aspect. Is the idea that once you get into magnetism, and magnet magnetism being the thing that's screwing over kind of the setting, mm-hmm. it's kind of a catch-all uh, thing in sci-fi is to be the thing that's screwing with reality, yeah. time, reverse the polarity, all, all yeah. that kind of stuff. But it would explain the curse of the abyss. Uh, I, I think it would loosely. Okay. I would think it would loosely explain it. It it explains the time aspect potentially. I don't, I don't think magnetism affects time. Uh, I mean, yes, gravi- it does. Gravity does. Gravity, yeah. But you know the, the the correlation between magnetism and gravity, like it's not a it's not a direct one. Yeah, but, but well, whatever. Anyway, we'll we'll leave that to the the physicists and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, oh. that's that's one of my theories is that still I think this is bringing up and I just want to keep reemphasizing it until it mm-hmm. potentially happens is that there is some kind of magnetic field emanating from the bottom of the abyss and the deeper levels uh just are proof the the, the effects of the deeper levels are proof of that field existing sure yeah there's definitely there's definitely some kind of you know force emanating from the abyss um like that that much i would say is is very clear i i don't i don't think it's going to end up being magnetic but but yeah as if if you if it had to be something and they had to explain it an electromagnetic field makes plenty of sense mm-hmm. if they had it be just some just just nameless just force right some energy or what have you that would be them basically saying we're not going to explain it right well yeah 
and, m and me, I'm just taking a guess on the explanation. We both know there has to be some kind of field or energy or force yeah. or something that's emanating from right. it. It's just the question of what. So this is my guess. Okay. Yeah. Um, but them surviving, they also uh, have basically proven themselves to be kind of ready all the way down to, what was it, the fifth level? That was the point at which things get a little bit wonky with time. Uh, the Sea of Corpses at the sixth level, I think? No, the Sea of Corpses is the fifth level. To okay. go beyond that, that's where no one comes back from. But right. apparently some white whistles have been to the seventh level. Because well, that's the thing. Word of mouth. Here's, Word of mouth. here's, here's yeah. the crazy thought, is the idea that there have been white whistles that have gone below the sixth level because the sixth level is where the abandoned city was. Uh huh. Um, it, that's the probably the lost civilization. Right. Thing. But at the seventh level, they can send up letters or just yell out, "I see a thing." Yeah. That well, is the thing. Well, that's the thing that looks yeah. like this. <laughs> here's here's one of the crazy theories that I have. I love that they're doing the time distortion thing because that that basically makes the white whistles able to seem more epic because one, in a sense, they're kind of outside of time because they'll go down in right. these deeper levels, and that way you can have multiple white whistles around at a given point in time while it's still being a very rare occurrence for someone to actually get good enough to the point where they can become a white whistle because they might um, not because the white sure. whistles might live for a very long time time right because they spend so much time in the lower levels so even though well, okay but it's relative jacob yeah no it's time relative, relative so no yeah so they're not actually older but the thing is with regards to the city up top right so what you're saying is so what you're saying is mm -hmm. there could be white whistles down there from a gamut of a hundred years even though they've only felt the effects of like 20 years exactly yeah, yeah. I, I i get that so that's right but once they start making their way down there mm -hmm. the time starts to transition to white whistle kind of this this kind uh, of yeah yeah so they'll thing. still be aging at the normal rate down there but down there is moving slower than it is up top or was it that it was moving faster uh down is moving slower Right, down is moving slower, yeah. Right. So then, then up above, it's moving faster, which is why you could have a lot of different white whistles have them still feel like epic and awesome, even right. if they, even if it's not yeah. like, oh, who's going to be the new generation of white whistles like mm -hmm. every twenty years? And that's gravity. That that I think is actually the sure. gravity side. But the connection, Jacob, between electromagnetism and gravity is is like well, I, I well, had to think about it for a second, but there is some connection there. And also, if you think about it from the sense of them being inside some. Uh, planet's crust mm -hmm. the farther down they go the closer they get to the planet's core to the source of the gravity yes, which means it that, will it will change time slightly but, but that's another point that i didn't think about is all this physical pressure that comes on them mm -hmm. what if these are like actually natural phenomena that would happen in the real world but, but we then, just like, don't know up about to it. eleven for the sake of it being like a fantasy story, so that it's more yeah. Because over the top. actually, if you were to go below the Marianas Trench with no water, mm -hmm. you know, so there's no like pressure right, from right. that regard, uh, you would actually experience all kinds of nausea and disorienting kind of you know trippy effects with your right. brain and stuff like that because of how close you are now comparatively. To be on top of the Earth's crust. I don't know right. if that's an aspect to it. I think that would actually be more of a lack of pure oxygen that would cause that than, a, than, yeah. a, than a different aspect. And but because there's a the question of how they have enough oxygen down here. There's a lot but, of vegetation seemingly in the abyss. Right, that's and somehow getting sunlight from the force field or the whatever. The force it is. field that reflects it. But here's the thing I'm actually thinking mm -hmm. of that's, that's kind of interesting is the idea that once you start going down into the abyss, mm -hmm. it is like the submarine. There is very breathable material, like very breathable yeah. atmosphere there, but you start conditioning yourself to it. Okay, because maybe it like hasn't been polluted by all the stuff up top. Right, so my, okay. my thought is that it's not about the being in, in the top versus the bottom, it's the transition. So sure. if you had yeah. the ability to teleport to the bottom of the abyss, mm -hmm. but you teleported right back up to the top of the abyss, you wouldn't feel the effects. That's why the box is so important. Because it's not necessarily that the box is some sort of crazy sci-fi fantasy relic mm -hmm. or whatever. It's the it's idea just that, that it, it keeps you hermetically sealed, basically. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So to you, you basically teleported up top. Okay. So what kills mm -hmm. people and what brings people all this harm is the ascending, not the being at the different spots. So... So that gives more credence to the, the the field side of things. I just I just thought that was 
that was kind of a possibility okay. especially I, yeah i don't think uh, okay or or i hope and I, I i don't think but i also hope that they don't go too much into the explaining of things because, i don't think because okay. the big draw like i in in a, in a I'm lot thinking of ways way down the line jacob this sure. is obviously not going to end at season oh, oh yeah yeah absolutely but like when i think of something like this uh it seems very similar to something like lost sure right where there's a lot of mystery that's set up you know yep. and and it's like okay what's what's the deal <laughs> and we're not talking about and... electromagnetic fields exactly and stuff, yeah yeah right which they did go into which in they lost. did go into but yeah. quite frankly i would have rathered if they hadn't well right like, but but like, Lost, Lost had the aspect of being more sci-fi than right. fantasy, yes. so they, it made sense to explain it. Except when they started going into uh, season six, the final season, which is when things went full hard blown fantasy. Sure, like yeah, like it did, and yeah. that was oh, that was oh, the season absolutely. that most people didn't like. Right, and right, I I personally would have liked it more if they kept it more fantasy throughout, you, and then they just didn't do. But they never went full fantasy they well, even the, never will, the literally beginning, hinted at it the, the the pilot felt fantasy yeah like, yeah like yeah. i mean you had a smoke monster no you didn't well, see or, a smoke or you monster didn't, no you didn't see a smoke monster you see, just saw most people thought it was a dinosaur Jacob. right nope i remember yep yep yep, yep. But, but anyways, what I'm saying is the, the place where Lost went uh, the most downhill was when they started to explain things Jacob right I mean uh, Jacob, we huh. we have very different opinions okay, on Lost, okay, sure. so we're never going to agree on this regard. Fine, and yeah. I will I will agree to disagree absolutely. Yeah, but I I'm... hope they don't go into too much of explaining because the biggest draw for me is not the actual world itself, but mm. the sense of possibility about the world. Right, and this is one of the problems I have with watching shows like this with mm -hmm. sometimes people like you is yeah. the idea that you're not actually interested in the world. I, I mean, get I am, so but... invested into the world because they choose to give the uh, the possibility and mystery aspect of it a lot of leeway. Like, they, they are actually investing tons of creative energy into making the mystery aspect not only there, but compelling and this yeah. slow burn, this process that unveils over time to where they will explain things, Jacob, whether you like it or not. It's the question of how much and which parts are they going to explain. And my thing is I'm going to guess on everything because I think anything could be explained. But like you, sure. I agree that they're not going to explain everything. But, but, but those of you like I, I i can i can see it like it has to happen there are going to be specific things in this story that will be explained that will have us just ah! like jaw yes. drop like absolutely. mind blown absolutely but like, I want that's that, why I, people wanted us to yeah, watch yeah, yeah. this show but, but i want that to be the two or three things i don't want them to start going into yeah. like all the different artifacts or any of that crap yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that takes away the sense of wonder in it well and, and, jacob yes yeah i'm talking about the premise of the show Anytime, sure. anytime I start leading towards things like, ooh, this is electromagnetism, I'm basically saying there's some sci-fi element here, possibly. Ooh. And then you're like, well, it has to be more fantasy. I'm like, C -c -c come on, Jacob. They're trying to make it a hybrid of both. Right? Right? A little bit, but it's way more skewed it's, towards fantasy. It's way more skewed towards fantasy. I agree. But any time then that something gets skewed too far to one I, side, I don't it's not necessarily a hybrid anymore. Sure, but I don't want to hear Star Trek BS pseudoscience as a way to explain we the We haven't abyss. yet. We haven't yet. I know, but I'm just saying, the stuff that they have happening is not something that they could explain with actual science, no matter how they do it, They're, right? They haven't done that. No, though. I know, but the stuff you're talking about is is trying to explain it with See, with something relating to actual science. And since it, in my mind, clearly can't, right. I hope that they don't try to, and instead they own what it is they're doing, because what they're doing is so good. I, I agree. I agree. But what you, you shift back into every once in a while is that they can't explain it at all versus I don't oh, want no, them no. to explain it with Star Trek pseudoscience <laughs> stuff. I agree. I'm not saying that. They yeah. can say it's magnetism and then not explain that. They can say there's it's a magic. gravity field, not explain it, or magic. I yeah. equate those all to be the same thing. They're one phrase explanations with no real explanation because all they do is say it's doing something. Ooh, you know? Sure. It's basically magic in that regard. Right. We still haven't explained really any of the relics. Oh, yeah. And, and Ever. I'm, I am I'm just absolutely say, happy with that. What I'm saying they're going to explain is not the relics, it's the abyss. 
It's why the abyss is here. It's why people are fascinated with the abyss. It's why yeah. there are dead civilizations potentially at the bottom. Those kinds of things should be explained because they don't need to be explained sci-fi or fantasy. They can just unveil more questions and more exactly. questions. Yeah. And unfortunately, Jacob, mm -hmm. the, the, the thing about those types of stories is they don't have satisfying endings generally. Well, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see if they can give themselves an out and create a story that we haven't seen before mm -hmm. where they do explain things with a little bit, a little bit of science and a little bit of fantasy, but leave it really open with a lot of mystery as to the moment to moment stuff. Because it's not like they're going to go into the biology of one of these creatures or something, right? That's no, not the type no, of show. I don't think so. So why would they go into like the in-depth like stuff about one of these relics. I'm not I'm not saying yeah. they're going to. It's the idea that there will be answers that lead to more questions. They're not going to give the end all answer where suddenly you sure. have no questions. Don't worry. I'm not right. I'm not saying that. Yeah. Um because okay, here's here's one of the things that I see a lot of the time with uh, with stories specifically when they do some kind of mystery thing like this mm -hmm. is that they'll feel like they have to they have to explain things um without doing any kind of ambiguous explaining if if, if that makes sense where like if yeah. you have some sort of fan fantasy type thing they they can't that if they if they leave it mysterious then that's not an explanation and I, it technically I just, isn't but that's okay it, yeah right but they can but th they can have the explanation be that there isn't necessarily that much of an explanation no that's jacob you just say there is no explanation you don't need to have an explanation for a story to continue yeah my, my thing is saying that this story isn't one of those stories it has a huge percentage of it that's relegated to that a mm -hmm. huge percentage i would say like 60 to 70 percent but i'm saying yeah. that there's going to be there's going to be explanations to things that will lead to more questions, the 70%. And when those things happen, I want to be the one that was like, yep, called it, called it. I got those parts right. Because there are times where they start to foreshadow explanations and then they lead to more questions. That's the point where I feel like this story is masterfully weaving a, a tale of mystery with, with micro, like little micro explanations that do, um, like actually develop the story so I, I, do, I do admit it does have me worried about the ending because I do think of like, Lost constantly but I, I, I don't see what 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 you're worried about really um, just that they'll they'll try to that they'll basically lose sight of what makes us enjoy this show so much in the first place yeah don't worry about that yeah don't so, worry about that what I what I see right now the one thing that actually is going to make us have a genuine like reason to potentially not like this show mm -hmm. is the idea that this is not going to be a happy show. I can tell that this show right. has yeah. a very yeah, dark underlying bit. Oh, for sure. And I am yeah. worried slightly that it's going to get too slightly dark. that it might get too dark. I don't think it will. Yeah, but I can see it coming close. But to I can that see line. it coming close to that. Yeah. And other than that, I have no worries about this show. I can tell it's 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 masterful. It's fantastic. The yeah, mystery they, aspects they are handling so well. Yeah, they know they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. So yeah. don't don't right. worry about that. In a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, this is already so much better than Lost was. Like without like, you know, mm. Lost like the parts where Lost fell flat. See see, Lost did characters, Jacob. The, the, yeah, Lost did characters kicks this thing's ass in terms of uh, characters. Yes, yes, absolutely. With regards to the actual like like mystery like elements mm -hmm. though. Yeah. Um I feel like I feel like a lot of the times like as a way to show how this show is doing things so well, mm -hmm. a lot of the times with Lost it felt like they were directly tying, you know, constantly tying back to the things at the beginning and not like expounding on it and adding little extra flavor details themselves. Okay. So we have different things. Yeah, we have move away things. from a lot. Yeah, yeah. We we will just be here all day. All right. Thanks we're... for that tangent, guys. We had yeah. a lot of fun there. But uh, the things about this episode that really did focus on was adding that context for Ozen as a character, and we already went a little yep. bit into that with our discussion. But having this character be there as kind of a as a secondary uncle character when he kind right. of came on and gave them a boon and passed them on, gave them kind of their 
their, the, the torch of the mother and exactly. going on. Will we get another character like that? Because I feel That's like we predicted point. this formula a while ago. Yes. We were like, about every other episode or so, they're going to bump into a person that will be sort of a distraction that will give them their boon that, pass, that sends them forward. And the next... Okay. Oh, well, um, we, so we got the uncle on the first layer. We got Ozan on the second layer. Now they're moving to the third layer. So it might be that they get one every layer. Uh, I don't think they'll get one necessarily every layer. I feel okay. like right about now, this will be the point where they don't get a person. It'll be potentially where they get some kind of really scary, like, environmental uh, bit that they have to deal with. Okay. Um, I think maybe once we get to... I don't know. I think one of the next two layers won't have a person. I think it's the idea sure. that once they get past these two layers, yeah, things will be... Well, that's when they're going... After after these next two layers, it'll be the Sea of Corpses. So... Yeah. Yeah, that's my point. Is that those people will be the ones where we'll go, oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. Right. This, is, that this point, is what the abyss point, does gonna, to people. Yeah, at that point, they're going to start running into, at the very least, some white whistles. At the very least. Yeah. Yeah. So... Which is, which is exciting and scary. Yeah. One of the things I think they keep hammering home with this show is you're so excited and scared to go see what happens next. And but that, you have to. But you have to because yeah. it's the abyss. Yep. You're curious. It calls to us. It calls to you. It's the idea that once you're, you're in this, mm -hmm. why go back? Why go back? And I feel like they, they made this world... Just one more episode. Just they, one more layer. Well, yeah. But I think they made this world specifically to to kind of create that uh, desire within you and to mirror that with the characters and their desire to go into the abyss. Okay. It's the idea that I think that's it's it's kind of life imitating art in a way. It's the idea that it's not really life imitating art, but it's the idea that we perceiving the art feel the same feelings as those that are going through the story uh, right. because and that's, of yeah. the way they've structured it. Yes. It's and that is very intentional. The, and it's very impressive too because mm -hmm. the fact that they're able yeah. to make these parallels between the, the audience watching the show and right. what is actually happening for the characters in the show, that's not easy. It isn't. That is not easy. So yeah. hats off to them. Yeah, it's really good stuff. Yeah. All right, I think, I think that's about good for discussion yeah. now. All right, guys, well, if you want to see the next episode reaction, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreons early access. Get on that. You get access to the Discord as well. Mm -hmm. Get on there and chat with us. We love to talk to you about stories or what have you. Anything. And yeah, we'll see you all there. But until then, resemblance to sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time.